Hey everyone, this is Jacob Hawes. In this video, I'll be introducing Blender's Game Engine. It's a fast and powerful tool for creating games and other interactive applications. The first thing we want to do is to be able to actually launch the game within Blender. To do this, put the mouse over the 3D window and press the P key on your keyboard. As you can see, the camera and light icons in the 3D grid aren't rendered, only the cube with real-time lighting. This means that the game engine is running. To stop running the game engine, hit escape on your keyboard. To work more fluently with the game engine, we can optimize our workspace. At the top, you'll see a drop down that says Blender Render. Select Blender Game instead. As you can immediately notice, the properties panel has changed a bit. This is because switching to Blender Game hides some of the menu options that aren't associated with or compatible with the game engine. In addition, we can modify Blender's screen layout to better suit our purposes. By clicking this drop-down that immediately says default, we can see that there are a few preset layouts, including one for game logic. Select this, and you can see that Blender has rearranged our windows. In the middle, we have the 3D viewport. By default, it displays a top view, but let's go ahead and switch it to the camera view by selecting View, and then Camera. Alternatively, you can hit 0 on the numpad to do the same thing. There are a few different draw methods you can select in the viewport. If you go down to the bottom over here, there's a drop-down list with all the various drawing methods. By default, it displays solid mode, but when running the game engine, we want to be in textured mode. This renders objects with real-time lighting and textures. Blender also has different material modes. With the mouse in the 3D window, hit N on the keyboard to open up the properties panel. Scroll down to where it says display, and you'll see a drop-down that says multi-texture. Now there are three material modes offered in Blender, single texture, multi-texture, or GLSL. Single texture is the fastest of the three, but isn't capable of much graphically. On the other hand, GLSL allows for more accurate lighting, shadows, and allows other filters and effects, but is also much slower and requires a decent graphics card to run well. That being said, not all computers support this mode. For our purposes, we'll be using the default multi-texture. Hit N to close this panel. To the left of the 3D viewport is a window called the Outliner. As its name suggests, it outlines all the objects in your game. Clicking on the name of an object in the Outliner will select it in the 3D viewport. This can be really useful when you have many objects rendered on screen. To the right of the 3D viewport is the Text Editor. This is used for typing up Python scripts that can be run in-game. We'll cover the specifics of the text editor window later. Directly underneath the text editor is the properties window. You should be acquainted with this by now, but bear in mind that some of the panels have changed now that we're using Blender Game instead of Blender Render. For example, the physics tab looks much different and now holds options specific to the physics system used in-game. The material panel has changed as well. At the bottom, we have a window called the Logic Editor. This houses the Logic Brick system, which is an easy way of programming simple game functions. We'll go more in depth with the Logic Brick system in another tutorial. Keep in mind that all of your programming will be done either in the Logic Editor window or the Text Editor window. So this serves as a basic introduction to the game engine. This has been Jacob Hawes, and thanks for watching.